Our next guest went from the pinnacle of the entertainment world to a journey of self-discovery that took her around the world. And her enlightening discoveries are captured in the new memoir, Finding Samuel Lowe from Harlem to China. Author Paula Madison, welcome to Arise. Thank you so much. How Paula. are you? Thank you, so Shannon. Good I'm to great. See you. you look fantastic. Yes. Well, you know, there is life after TV. There is. <laughs> I just want to give you hope. Okay. Thank you. It's good to hear. And your life after TV let, led you on this journey to find your long lost Chinese grandfather, as well as other ancestors dating back to 1006 BC. BC. That Before is amazing. Yeah. But, you know, what really led you to this journey in the first place? Well, my brother and I grew up in Harlem. Mm -hmm. uh, our mother uh, emigrated to the United States uh, uh, separately from our father, but they met in Jamaica and married in the U.S. in mm -hmm. 1945. My mother's father was Chinese, and uh, he was one of the waves of Chinese men who had come to the Caribbean mm -hmm. um, in order to work the sugar plantations. Many people do not know that that's this exotic look mm -hmm. that people think that you find in the Caribbean mm -hmm. with the people there. Uh, many of us are mixed with Chinese, many of us are mixed with Indian. Mm -hmm. And those mixtures came as a result of the abolition of slavery by the British in 1838. When that happened and there was no more free African labor, they began importing uh, Chinese and Indians into the Caribbean in order to work the sugar plantations. Mm -hmm. And so they didn't let the women come because they only wanted the back-breaking labor done. These men lived largely in the slave quarters. They earned very little money. But what ultimately did happen was they were there. They weren't allowed to bring their women, their families along with them. And so they did what I think came naturally. They fell in love with Jamaican women. Mm -hmm. My grandfather uh, arrived in Jamaica in 1905 at the age of 15. And he had two Jamaican wives. And then um, ultimately his family in China realized this guy's just going to keep sending money home for us to buy things, mm -hmm. but he's not coming back. Mm -hmm. So what they did was they sent a bride for him to marry sight unseen. Wow. So she traveled a from China, a bride. Chinese woman. Yeah. And when she arrived, my grandfather went to the two African Jamaican women and said, I would like to raise my children with my Chinese wife. One of the wives said, all right, we can work this out. Mm -hmm. My grandmother was the one who said, oh, no, that's not happening. <laughs> not, it's not going to happen. Not only is it not going to happen, but you're never going to see your daughter again. Wow. So my, my mother was three years old when she and her father were permanently separated. This is the story that I grew up with, with my mother here in Harlem, looking like a Chinese person. She looked more Chinese than black. Um, and then there's me and my two older brothers, and we look black. Right. Oh my goodness. Wow. But so, now that you say that you have, you know, Chinese blood. Are you as well, staring at me? I'm oh, right. <laughs> trying to figure it out now. No, like, I okay, can. These I features. can see it now. What happens is and when I've that happens, you for years, you've known me for no years, idea. and I, when I speak publicly, I, I say, okay, so everyone, I'm going to take my glasses off for two seconds, mm -hmm. stare at me then mm -hmm. to see whether or not you can see it, and then, and then don't stare at me like that because you'll mm -hmm. make me uncomfortable, yes. and everybody <laughs>, laughs. But, but what ultimately did happen was when I retired from NBC Universal in uh, 2011, I said, I'm going to clear the decks and mm -hmm. I'm going to find my Chinese family. Why was that important for you to do, especially at that point in your life? Well. I decided this actually when I was a little girl, that I was going to find my grandfather and my grandfather's family. My mother was always very sad. There was a melancholy that just, mm. you know, was around her because I realized, even as a, a little girl, that my mother misses her family. Mm -hmm. And we grew up uh, a very small unit in Harlem, yeah, right? Very so insular. Very insular. We didn't have relatives. And it was just us and our mother. And we were just three black kids playing out on the street, Ring Alivio, Double Dutch, yeah. right. whatever. <laughs> and then our mother would show up. Mm. And, pe and the people who knew us, it was OK. But for people who weren't that familiar, they'd be like, who's that woman? Mm. Was she ostracized in that community, or was no, she embraced? No, no, okay. no. She was not ostracized, but she was different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we were different when she was around. When she wasn't around, we were like everybody else, although when I started first grade, I pronounced these two words with open A's. I, I pronounced bathroom and banana. <laughs> and when I got to school and kids laughed, I realized, oh, not everybody speaks like this. Yeah. Yeah. So immediately adjust. But what it did, if you remember, when I retired from NBC Universal, 
I was the chief diversity officer mm -hmm. for the company. I was very aware of differences of race and culture from the time I was a little girl. Mm -hmm. So this all kind of came naturally to me. I found my mm -hmm. family in China. Um, but how did you go about it? You know, a lot of people want to research their family but don't know where to start. Right. So how did you start and what research was involved? Well, the, the, the place you have to start is inside of your own family. Mm -hmm. The reason why many of us don't know who our ancestors are is because we have relatives who just don't want to talk about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. You know, that was in the past. Leave it in the past. Uh, I'm not that kind of person, mm -hmm. right? So I need to know. So I asked as many questions as I could. I didn't know many of the answers, but ultimately what I did was after my mother and father both died in 2006, I had missed the moment to really interview them mm -hmm. as a trained journalist. I didn't do that. What I did was after that, I went to my father's siblings and said, okay, so listen, I really need help. I need help. Can you think of how I can find my Chinese relatives? And they began to ask the others in the family. And ultimately, what we learned is the largest number of Chinese Jamaicans in the Americas are in Toronto. Is There's that a right? conference that happens every year of my, my cultural minority. It's called Hakka. The Hakka mm -hmm. people in China is who I'm a descendant of. And I went to a conference they have every four years. I met the co-chair of the conference, whose name is Dr. Keith Lowe. And I said, you're the only Chinese Jamaican I've ever met who has the same last name as my father and my mother. And he said, no, I, I, never, I don't know them. I've never heard of them. And after about two weeks of cajoling and begging, he said, all right, all right. I'll contact my nephew in Hong Kong. And I'll ask him to ask the family in China, has anyone ever heard of a Samuel Lowe? And the next day, the email that I was copied on said, my uncle says Samuel Lowe is his father. Wow. Are you serious? Okay, so Paula, who's going to play you in the movie? <laughs> right. Because this um, is going to be a movie, so who's mm -hmm. going to play you in the movie? Well, don't you think that Viola Davis would be a really good movie? Oh, yes. That's what I think. That would yes. be perfect. You have your own media company. You can do it all yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you can make it happen. You can make that happen. But we, we have a very long lineage, mm -hmm. um, and especially um, because of this, I say this in, regardless of the audience, but especially for this audience, what I want people to understand is although I am blessed to be able to trace my Chinese lineage back to 1006 BC. Um, on the African side of my family, mm -hmm. I, can, I, am, I go back to the beginning of time. Wow. Because the first man on the planet was an African man. There you go. Everybody comes from Africa. That's true. And I don't want it lost as though, oh my God, oh my God, you know who you, you know what? Mm -hmm. I am as African as I am Chinese. In fact, I'm more African. I'm three quarters African Jamaican, mm -hmm. and I'm one quarter Chinese. Mm -hmm. But and I you're don't. You're all good with us, Miss Madison. Yes. They're telling us to. Write. All right, thank you so <laughs> but much. But when the when the movie yes. comes out, we well, definitely well, the book have is you out back. now, yes. and I'd love to talk <laughs> to you about the movie when it does come out. All right, all right. thank well, you so here. much for joining thank us. Thank you so much. All right, and we'll be right back with more Rise Entertainment 360.